And hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and this super California tasting it's become an annual event. I'll tell you, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon from California, especially Napa Valley, one of the easiest wines to sell and tastings with these top level wines. This is a warm up for our cult tasting, which we had to move because of Hurricane Matthew. But um, let me tell you, these are some of the cult wines of yesteryear, the Ridge Montebellos, the Diamond Creek single vineyard wines. These were the first wines to reach a hundred dollars a bottle today. $1,000 a bottle? Hey, man, Screaming Eagle, we just sold a bottle for $3,500. So the sky seems to be the limit in terms of what these Napa Valley producers can get. And, hey, this is, uh, you know, we have a couple of wines that aren't from Napa here. We have the Ridge Montebello from the Santa Cruz Mountains. And um, oh, I'm sorry, that's the only one. But uh, like I said, when you're talking great Cabernet Sauvignon, even though Napa only produces 3% of the wine in California, about 50% of the dollars. So we started out this evening with a wine that I had been waiting to taste for years. All these wines came from our friend, Dr. Bob Malner Cellar. And with 10,000 bottles at home, you could lose a bottle for a few years. And I think this 74 Insignia, the very first vintage of Joseph Phelps Insignia, um, we first had it on the docket to drink five years ago, but Bob couldn't find it. Thank God he finally did, man. This is an incredible vintage. A 74, still very young. That color on this wine was just incredible. Very youthful. This wine had a bouquet that had toffee, coffee, mocha, earth, and still a good amount of that dark currant and plum fruit. And, uh, hey, it was the highest alcohol wine on the table at 13.8. That's right. Uh, the youngest wines, 91s, were still before they started making 15% alcohol wines here. This wine had a lot of fruit still present on the tongue. Still quite alive on the second day. Lovely sweet tobacco spice, silky smooth tannins, dark chocolate, dried meats, uh, smoky notes. Uh, this wine got seven votes for first place and two for second, making it the wine of the night on this evening. The 75 Diamond Creek showing brilliantly. Uh, this wine had that ferrous earth you get from the, the red rock, the red earth in the nose, and a little bit of a medicinal note turning into like an aged cheese kind of aroma. One of the most intriguing bouquets on the table. Dried tobacco, fine herbs, uh, really nice secondary aromas coming out of this wine. Still some tannins left on the tongue, but uh, drinking very nicely still this 75. One vote for first place this evening. Somebody thought it was their favorite wine. The 76 George de la Tour. Um, private Reserve, the oldest bottling of a Private Reserve Cabernet in California. It goes back to the 30s, this famous winery, one of the original four in Napa Valley. This wine's still most excellent, man. It had a really distinct, almost curry-like spice to the nose here. Dried tobacco, leather salad, red uh, currant berry fruit, really smooth on the tongue, silky, that Asian spice and curry note coming through on the finish. A little bit of Rutherford dust and still a little bit of fruit left here. This was a drought year, so excellent concentration here. And that's why you got to vote for first place. 78 Ridge Montebello, a blockbuster. Wow. This wine still had incredible color to it, a good amount of fruit, fresh earth, graphite, dried meaty notes, some tobacco, dark berries, plums. Uh, just incredible. Incredibly complex bouquet of aroma, even better on the second day. This wine still has a solid core of fruit on the tongue. Silky tannins and a little bit of that Band-Aid kind of medicinal qual note coming in. A little bit of Brett maybe, but this adds to the complexity of this wine. Doesn't take away from it. This wine got, um, it was definitely the second place finisher in my mind. And the crowds, three votes for first place, three votes for second. Most excellent juice also. The 80 Grace Family by Camus. Wow, this wine had more grape skin sediment in it than I think I've ever seen in a wine. Wow, well, Randy Dunn was making the wine back then, so uh, let me tell you, this wine, very different than the Camus wines of today. Surprisingly still spry, and a uh, little dark chocolate, mocha notes on the nose, some fresh plowed earth, good amount of current cassis berry fruit here still. On the second day, even better, man. These wines opened up beautifully, silky smooth, wonderful balance. This wine still has a solid core of fruit there, and uh, wow, um, what an incredibly impressive um wine this is and like i said very different from the camus wines of today's three votes for first place excellent juice the 82 chateau montalena still very good had a little bit of that bread little medicinal band-aid note some dried tobacco currant and plum fruit uh very old school still alive um you can mistake the nose here for an old Bordeaux, man. This wine's classic cedar, dried tobacco, loamy earth showing through on the finish here as well. And, um, you know, got one vote for first place, one vote for second. Still alive, uh, but maybe not quite as improved on the second day as some of the other wines. Excellent juice. The 84 Diamond Creek. Wow.
Most excellent juice. This wine had kind of a pickling spice note to the gravelly minerally notes, green pepper, a little red currant, uh, dried herbs, coffee. Uh, still a nice amount of fruit here as well. This wine rich and concentrated on the tongue. Some tannins here, but nice acidity, nice freshness. This wine, wonderful balance, even better on the second day. Got a vote for first, two votes for second. The smallest production of all the wines. The lake, not made every year, and um, like 200 cases. Uh, one of the rarest of all of the California cult wines, the Lake from Diamond Creek. 84. Wow, what a treat that was. And the 85 done Howell Mountain. And a little bit of bread here, too. I mean, this is kind of, this wine's known for that to me, but not off putting again. That was kind of a one of the things that added complexity to the wines of yesteryear Napa and Bordeaux. A little cigar box spice and fresh earth, red currants, plum fruit. Even bigger on the second day. This wine showing what Randy Dunn does best age worthy Cabernet. You can't drink these wines for 10 or 20 years. Hey, this wine over 30 years old and uh, really drinking nicely here. A little bit lighter than most of the other wines. Some dry tannins at the end. And maybe losing a little bit of fruit on the second day. But it got a, no votes for first or second, but a lot of honorable mentions on this afternoon and evening, rather. And then the 91 flight. Actually, I kept these wines and drank them the next morning, and I'll tell you the 91's definitely most improved. This is a killer vintage from Napa. And even though it's over 20, it's 25 years old now, you could still hang on to these 1991's. The Schaefer Hillside Select, the Dominus, the Arajo, the Ridge, all most excellent. I'd have to say the Dominus was my favorite of these. This wine, I gave my highest award killer. But like I said, a lot of honorable, a lot of most excellence on this tasting. And uh, just an incredible evening. The Super California Tasting shows why Napa Valley gets so much money. I'll tell you what, not only these wines high in terms of quality, but they are age worthy. One of the things you pay for to me and an expensive bottle of wine is the ability to age it. All right, that's what we had to drink at our Super California Tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.